Peace, peace, peace. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know, it's your boy Vic Slain Hope. And I got another video for y'all today. This one is about the mind state of people while incarcerated. And before I get into the video, I would like y'all to like, comment, subscribe, share. That's how YouTube keeps putting my stuff out there so other people can see it. Help me spread this message, y'all. And for the people who have been doing that, I want to thank y'all. I appreciate y'all because I couldn't be where I'm at without y'all. So I really, truly appreciate it. So the mind state. You know, a lot of times people ask me, somebody asked me to make this video, which is why I'm making it. And then in some of my other videos, I touch upon the mental state of people in incarceration, right? So I want to start by saying that, like, when you get locked up, a lot of things be on your mind, right? From whether somebody telling on you, how is your family doing? Like, are you going to make it out of here? What's going to be like the situation in jail? You start thinking about a whole bunch of things. So it plagues your mind. And then as you experience certain things, as you see certain things, you know, it kind of like weighs on you. And a lot of times we as guys, as men, we can't really talk about it. We really don't have an outlet. Oftentimes you might have had your girl, your girl used to come see you. Now your girl's not there no more. Your mom, she might be gone too, or maybe your mom can't understand you. Sometimes people want somebody to be there that's not their mom. Like, it's cool, but sometimes people lose support. Like, when you're in jail, you lose a lot of support over the, over the years or over the months that you are in there. So, you know, at some point in time, it feels like you're going through it by yourself. And nobody in there talking about it. Nobody in there want to go to counseling. Like, you know, we, we don't do that, man. Like, you know, that's that sucker stuff. Like, don't cry. Don't go to counseling. Don't talk about your problems. And then there's like, the only outlet is like, just wild out. Just bang out. And like, this is a lot of the things that used to happen when you unlock, when you locked up. Like, if somebody go to court, hear bad news. Or somebody, when their girl break up with them. Or they heard she was cheating. Or whatever upsets somebody in jail. Like, something is bound to happen in jail. You know, this person is hurt. And they're about to go hurt somebody. Or they're about to go hurt themselves. And this is the things that we don't really talk about enough. And, you know, when you get to prison and you lose that support, like, it's very crucial. Support is very crucial. Because i give you a, I'll give you a story. Like, my girlfriend, when I got locked up, I had a girlfriend. And then me and my girlfriend broke up. And, you know, in the beginning, when we were still together, her mom used to talk trash about me. You know, she used to be like, oh, you dealing with this jailbird? Why you, what you going to do with a jailbird and X, Y, Z, right? But somewhere along the line, her mom had a change of heart. You know, her mind changed. I don't know what changed it. I don't know what happened. But I know after some time, like, I wasn't even messing with her daughter at the time. But she still used to send me stuff. Like, me, she used to write me. We used to communicate with each other. And she would send me stuff, you know. And I felt like... That was like a great thing. Like, you know, it was it was very appreciated. And she sent me this one card. She probably sent me like a few cards, but she sent me this one card that I always remember. And I kept it with me. And I believe I still have it. I'm not sure where it's at. But the card always reminded me of like, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. And it said like, it, it just has some good words, some good, powerful words. And sometimes we don't cherish that because we don't really know. We, sometimes the people that on the outside, they don't know like what a letter or what a little passage might do. I had like a homegirl that she used to always write me. Like it don't matter. And this was like, sometimes you get letters from the people that you least expect. You know, like one moment I go from my house being the headquarters, right? And everybody knows me and I'm this popular dude. And then now you're in jail and then it's like, you know, your buzz starts to fade. Like people forget about you. People, you know, they, they live in their lives. You know, but... So when there's people that always remember to check on you, when there's people that always remember to hit you up, ask your family how you doing, um, even if they don't send you nothing, like those small things, you don't know what they can do for a person that is locked up. And a lot of times people be in there frustrated and then, you know, there's some stuff going on in there, jail politics that you got to deal with. Then there's some stuff going in the courthouse and you're just trying to get home. You just, you start thinking about things that you never thought about when you was in the street. You start thinking about, like, I can't even, I can't even think about certain examples, but like, you start just thinking about a whole bunch of stuff because you have a lot of time in your hands to just think and think and think. And then negative thoughts creep up in your head. You start wondering why you in jail. You start wondering, like, 
sometimes you start even wondering, like, <laughs> is it worth me being alive? Like, and some people end up trying to kill themselves while they are in jail or in prison. So, and I'm not going to say I didn't have my fair share of those negative thoughts, right? Because I did. There was moments where I thought about, like, yo, like, especially, like, you know, you start reflecting, right? So then you start thinking about, like, like for me, for example, like, I, I started thinking about, like, yo, my whole life been, like, rocky since the beginning, right? Like, yeah, although I had good moments in my life, but, like, a lot of other moments in my life was not so good. So you start thinking about those moments, right? You in a negative situation, and now you start thinking about more negative things that happened prior to you getting into this big sticky mess, right? So sometimes you start wondering, like, yo, like, like, like I've been suffering, like I've been suffering for a long time. Like, is it even worth for me to keep going? Then you start thinking, like, it, the people already left you, right, in the street. Your friends don't write you. Your girl don't left you. Your mom might not be there. And even if she is there, you sometimes you want somebody to be there other than your mom. And then it's like, you start to think like, damn, like if I kill myself, will people even miss me? Like, would they even think, you know, so you just start feeling like, damn, you just start feeling like, why am I living for? And I think this is the the, the thought that a lot of people experience and they just not going to talk about it. They're not going to tell you about it. <laughs> you know, your mans might call you. You might ask him, Yo, how you doing? He might be like, I'm good. You know, everything fine. You know what I'm saying? And, and deep down, it might not be fine. And that's because, again, you know, y'all know how the societal stuff works, like, Men can't do nothing, right? You can't talk about this. You can't say this. You can't cry. But oftentimes, our mothers or the women in our life exhibit toxic masculine traits way more than the men in our lives. You know what I'm saying? But y'all not ready for that conversation. That's a, that's a whole other conversation. But the point of this video is about that if you got family in there, man, check up on them. You know, write them a letter. It don't take that long to write a letter, even if it's a short letter. One time, one of my homegirls wrote me a letter. It was like a small paragraph, like, but I, I appreciated it that she thought about me, that she sat down and she wrote that. Never mind how much time she got in a day or she could have wrote this or she could have sent this or they could have sent that. Like, never mind that you got to be appreciative of the small things that people do for you. And I think like just having those smiles from those letters. I didn't really care so much about the visits, but even, you know, I had people come see me like randomly. Like even those little things, man, they feel good. It makes people in there feel like, yo, they care about me. They thinking about me. They want me to come home. I got something to come home to, you know? So those things, those things really matter. I also want to add that like that experience being incarcerated is, is very traumatic. Like you come home doing a lot of those things, right? Some people come home and they still shower with their underwear on. Some people come home and they still don't fully sleep, right? They still like put their back against the wall. Like when I first came home, I always put my back against the wall. Like I couldn't sit by like a door. Like I couldn't sit with my back towards the entrance. I couldn't do certain things because I still had that mind state of being in lockup. And some of the changes are so inconspicuous and subtle that we don't even notice them. We don't even recognize them. I think I have problems getting into a relationship or getting married because I've been by myself for so long. Like, I've been by myself for so long, didn't need nobody, didn't have to depend on nobody. I did my own thing. And I think it changes your mindset. It changes you. And sometimes we don't even notice that we are messed up psychologically, you know? And then we don't want to go to therapy because we know what the medical field has done to black folks. But then there's also that stigma. Like if you go to therapy, if you seek help, you're something's wrong with you. You're defective. You're no good. So all these different things are something that is plaguing the minds of our families and our loved ones. And I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> right before I got released, I remember I never had no visits when I was upstate. So... Right before I got released, I remember when I was at the counselor's office and, you know, they're trying to decide the little parole stuff. So I was at the counselor's office and then the counselor was like, they gave me an assessment. And they basically the assessment was stating that because I didn't have nobody come see me in prison, that most likely I didn't have no family support when I got when I when I when I got home and that most likely I would return to prison. <laughs> that's like that's, this is just like the mentality, right? The mind state that the people that designed this, you know what I'm saying, kind of like put together, right? Like this is like they whole little assessment. Like, okay, if you don't get letters, you don't get packages, you don't get this, that means that he don't have no support when he get home and he most likely gonna return. 
So, but you know, by the grace of God, that that didn't happen to me, right? Like I have friends that kind of like looked out, they gave me money. I have family that looked out, and so I was, I, I ended up being good. I met some people that helped me out. You know, I got into school, I went into college. So a lot of things just changed my life. And I'm glad, and I thank all those people that helped me out that was part of my life and part of my re-entering society. Because if those people didn't help me, like, I, I would have a hard time. Like, I see it all the time. People have a hard time re-entering society. And uh, even harder time coping with prison, right? So some of the things, sometimes I did have suicidal thoughts. And I think one of the things that kept me going, that kept me strong, it was my religion. It was my faith. In Islam that kept me going. I knew I couldn't kill myself. Not saying that I was gonna kill myself, but sometimes you think about it. Sometimes you'd be like, yo, like, you know, what would happen if you know, like you just it just crosses your mind, like how would it feel? Like like what would happen? Like do people will people miss me? Like you think about some of those things, right? But then like some of those things I will always shake them off because it's like in Islam, like if you kill yourself by suicide, you know, you go to the hellfire. So that always kept me like shaking the shaking the thought off. Not saying that I was gonna do it, because I don't think I could bring harm to myself. But sometimes suicide comes in the form of I know I'm gonna go wild on the cop. I'm gonna go wild out on the CEO and hopefully they kill me. Always gonna I'm gonna go out there and shoot at the cops and hopefully they kill me. This is this is also like another mindset of like I'm not gonna kill myself, but I'm gonna make somebody kill me, which I feel like is suicide too. And I feel like a lot of young men are out here feeling like that. They feel like they don't got nothing to live for. So they go out here and they do crazy things. And I think part of them really want somebody to put them out their misery. And part of that is because we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. And I said this in my other video, we don't talk about it. And we don't create spaces for men to talk about it. And another thing to add to that is sometimes men do be trying to talk about their problems. Sometimes men do be trying to talk about their issue. But it's dumb friends that you might have that might be like, come on, man, yo, shake that sucker stuff off. Or sometimes it might be the woman in your life. She like, come on, like, you know what I'm saying? So sometimes there's different people in your life who hinder you from talking about your situations. And in some cases, I don't been in situations myself where I might try to tell a woman what I'm going through or what my problem is. And I can't even finish talking about me because they interject and they start talking about them or they don't really listen to me, or they don't really pay attention. Like, they always say, we not listening, but then it's like, but do you listen? Do you hear what I'm trying to tell you? Are you comprehending? Like, are, are you even trying to like, you know, maybe have an open ear to it, open mind? Like, you know, this is the things that we gotta think about, about when we think about effective communication. But I don't wanna get into that because that's a whole other topic about relationship issues. And relationship dynamics. But right now I'm just talking about the mind state of folks in jail and prison and so many different things that they might be thinking about. So check on your loved ones. Even if it's a small paragraph, write them. You might not have money, but even I'll give you another scenario. My man's came to see me one time. Rest in peace, a will. This dude only had a dollar to his name, and he gave me the dollar. He gave me his last dollar to his name when he came to see me. You know what I'm saying? And I remember my son Sleepy was laughing at him. He was making fun of him. He was just like, oh, you bum ass. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You only gave him a dollar. Like, in a moment, yeah, it was funny. We laughed at him. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I was like, yo, I respect that, bro. Like, he gave me his last dollar. Like, he gave me his last buck. And you know, man, Allah have mercy on my bro and forgive him. I mean, but he gave me his last dollar. And like, those are the things that I remember. Those are the, the small things. Like, some of us would have been like, you know, wowed out or whatever the case might be. But I remember that. He gave me his last buck. You know, so small things count, man. Don't don't always rule yourself out. Oh, he's not going to appreciate that. And even if you don't appreciate that, you did your little thing. You did your little thing. But just be mindful that people are in there. They're suffering. They're going through things. And they don't even have no outlet to deal with it. So just be mindful. And I just want to share that with y'all. Make sure if y'all like it, share it, comment on it. Let me know what y'all think. And make sure y'all like, because that's how it gets pushed around. You know what I'm saying? So y'all take care out there. Peace.